Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today we are going to talk about impurity as well as greed. And these two issues, because that's just what they are for some people, are important to look a little bit closer into because what happens is that when people behave uh, in ways that are negative, they tend to bring other people down. Now, you may find yourself at times acting in impure ways, and you may also find that you tend to be greedy for stuff, for material wealth and so forth. You may even go to God with a long list of things. Meanwhile, God is saying and showing you, I'm not getting you all that stuff. (laughs) Like the parent who tells the child, I'm not getting all that stuff for you. So you might as well just go ahead on and enjoy the things that you already have. Because this is not where I'm taking you right now is on a shopping spree. But where I am taking you is uh, um, any number of things, right? Some parents will say, well, I'm taking my child into um, um, extracurricular activities. We're going to stop buying all these toys. God is saying, okay, well, I'm taking you into... Uh, being a better individual, okay? I want you to be more loving. I want you to be more kind, righteous, and so forth. And folks are thinking, well, when I'm having this quality time with the Lord, right? I'm having some time where I'm expecting him to bless me and all that. Meanwhile, the Lord said, yeah, I'm going to bless you, but I'm not going to bless you with material wealth. Not at this time. And that's a downer for some people because they're going to the Lord with a, All of these requests, all of these things that they want, things that tear, things that break, things that rust. And the Lord said, that's not where my focus is at, because you're about to enter into a new level around new devils. And you need some some uh, spiritual armor and you need to uh, be a better individual. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to refine you like iron. Okay, and get you ready for what's ahead. And some folks, oh, and I thought I was getting a car. (laughs) And I thought I was going to get me a righteous woman. And I thought I was going to be married by now. And the Lord said, the man that you're with, for some of you all, that's not even a man that I called you to be with. And for some of you others, you're sitting here anticipating that that boy, that boy is going to one day become a man. And you're going to end up being his wife. And the Lord said, I didn't call you to that either. Just because you have sex with someone and you receive some roses, some candy or a little bear doesn't mean that I called you to that type of relationship. Come on now. So impurity shows up in a lot of ways, not just in conversation, but also in your uh, mannerisms and the things that you choose to do with other people. And God will call you out on it or he'll use other people to call you out and sometimes we fight back we say "Uh -uh, I don't want to hear that the Lord said watch your conversation I look I had every right to go off on that man the other day but the Lord said watch your conversation if and if anything you need to confess sin you need to turn from that type of mindset and you need to make wrongs right with that individual I know it hurts some people to have to go and apologize But sometimes that's all a person's looking for is a simple apology. I'm sorry. You know, I was I was out of pocket that day. I'm sorry. You know, there were some things that you said that um, really hurt me. But at the same time, I had no business going off on you like I did. I should have never touched this or messed with that or, you know, got involved with this one or that one. And I'm sorry that I hurt you. You see, a simple apology. But some folks, though, they're not convicted enough and they're not allowing the Lord to deal with them long enough to uh, to do what's right. And so this is why relationships remain stagnant. And this is why some folks don't get themselves involved with other people because they don't need all of the drama that they're going to bring over and over again as a result of unrepentance. So now that you got an opening, a brief opening on uh, some examples of impurity and even folks being greedy for uh, more things behind, uh, behind uh, closed doors, let us read Ephesians 5. 
And I am reading out of the Life Application Bible by Tyndale. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Now, for some of you all, my study Bible for further explanation says that just as children imitate their parents, we should imitate Christ. His great love for us led him to sacrifice himself so that we might live. Our love for others should be of the same kind, a love that goes beyond affection to self-sacrificing service. Okay. Now, what I didn't say in the beginning of this message is this is going to be a series, but it won't be a long series. It'll be a two part message. OK, because in this part, we're going to talk about uh, the very uh, things that I mentioned earlier. But then in the second part, we're going to talk about wives and husbands. OK, so for those of you all who are already in relationships and married and so forth, you're going to want to tune in to the wives and husbands portion of Ephesians 5. Okay, let us continue. Ephesians 5, 3. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality. Now, let me stop right there. We have just wrapped up the Valentine's Day holiday season for some or just a day. But the point is, is that some folks were behaving in ways that were sexually immoral. Okay. Now, it is self-explanatory that one is not supposed to be having any type of sexual relations outside of marriage. If you haven't dedicated your relationship to Christ, if you haven't stood before men and women and vowed to be committed to that partner that you have, then your relationship is not. The kind of relationship that God is pleased with. Okay. Let me say what I just said in this way. If you are out there having sex with this woman, that man, or many people, God is not pleased with that type of relationship. How do I know this? Because I was in those types of relationships. And when I decided to accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, not only did the Lord speak to me in my quiet time when it came to my relationship woes, but he also used people in the church to remind me that in order to walk this walk, I had to be cleaned up. And part of being cleaned up was that I could not have a sexually immoral moral lifestyle. Okay. So some of you all, it can't be sexually immoral with the opposite sex or with the same sex. I love how the opposite sex will point the finger at those who have sexually immoral lifestyles with the same sex as if just because they're having sex with someone who is a different sex, it's okay. The Lord says it's not okay. Not with the same sex with an animal. And yes, we do have those individuals that do have sex with animals. OK, it's not OK to have sex uh, that is painful and uh, sex that is um, just we can't even get into all the details. It all falls under sexual immorality. OK. So I've made it plain. If somebody has issue with that, please take it up with Jesus Christ. OK, so let us read on. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity. OK, so that pretty much covers it all. Nor of any kind of impurity. OK. Or listen to this. Because sex is real easy to talk about, especially if you're not getting any <laughs> and you're not out there doing it with anybody and everybody. So that's a safe topic for some folks. But then listen to this part. Once again, 
but among you there must not be even a hint of reading on greed because these are what improper for God's holy holy people why are they improper let's think about it why is why is greed improper now we talked about sexual immorality right when you are getting getting yourself involved with different people and you are connecting with this one and that one, that's not good for your soul. You're going to find yourself distant from the Lord. You're going to find yourself caught up with their demons within and around them. Some of you all who have been mixed up with, dare we say, a soul task, right? People who got something that's a bit different about them and you can't seem to shake them. And you know that they're not necessarily godly types of folks. Okay, and they're weighing you down spiritually, mentally and physically because they're in your pocket, too, and they want your material assets and so forth. Okay, they draw you away from the Lord because you're so involved. Your mind, your body and spirit is so consumed with them. Right. So with the sexually immoral, they're constantly giving themselves away. You know, with this one and that one, and they feel an emptiness. They feel a void on the inside. Now, with greedy people, greedy people are out here and they're doing all sorts of things that are unrighteous and untrue um, because they want more. Okay, greedy people can fall into the sex category, too, because you get people who's greedy for sex. It's never good enough. Your wife, your husband's not good enough or your boyfriend or girlfriend's not good enough. Now you got to go out there. You got to cheat. You got to creep. You got to lie. You got to cover up. You got to be secretive. Some folks was doing this on Valentine's Day and they think that people don't know just because somebody don't run up on you and start yelling and screaming and ripping up the house or tearing up your car or messing up your stuff doesn't mean that they don't know. Like I said, some people's greedy for sex. They're greedy for money. Like I said earlier, people go to the Lord behind closed doors with a long list of stuff. It's never good enough. The Lord said, I gave you this. They say, I know, Lord, but you know what? There's a problem with this. The man says, there's a problem with the woman you gave me. The woman says, there's a problem with the man that you gave me. Somebody else says, there's a problem with that job that you gave me, Lord. I want another one. Matter of fact, I need about two or three in order to uh, pay all these bills and help out this one and that one. Did the Lord tell you that you needed to be helping out all these people? One job is sufficient. Work with the money that you got. That's the answer to somebody's prayer. Keep going to the Lord wondering how come he won't give you. He won't give you this, that and the other. He said, because what you got is good enough for right now in this season. You got some other people. It's never good enough. Their toys, big boy toys, never good enough. I want another car. I want another house. I'm going to believe God for a bigger church. We got plenty greedy ministers. They won't admit that they're greedy, but they are greedy because they want people to give more money to feed their selfish desires, to feed their legacy, to feed their name on a church. They say, no, I don't want a name. I just want uh, this to be about God. But on the back end, it's about them because they go to the organizations, to the meetings and so forth. And the first thing that they say is their name and their church. The first thing they say is what they want to do with their church. You see, greedy. I want more. It's never good enough. Now, I understand when some things are broken and messed up and they need to be fixed and, you know, this is no longer working because the church is growing or this is no longer um, getting me to my job. And, you know, I'm tired of the frustration of walking into the office because I'm late once again. I get that. But I'm talking about people who already have. They got more than enough. They got money past their lifetime and yet they still want more. They won't even give up what what they got to help other people. Here's five dollars. What's five dollars going to do? We know that most things when we go to the store, right? We're spending 20 plus dollars. What's five dollars going to do? So they got a whole pile of this over here, but they won't give you one. Don't you have enough cookies, candies and all this other stuff? Well, can I get one? No. Don't you have enough money for this, that and the other? Can I get some money? No. Don't you have about two or three cars? Is it possible if you could give one away? I'm not giving nothing away. <laughs> I'll sell it to you. Okay. 
you got a whole wardrobe full of clothes. I mean, all these wonderful designer names and so forth, and you don't wear half those clothes. So what? They're my clothes. I'm not giving you anything. Woo! You see? <laughs> uh-huh. We got to make it plain for some people. It's not good enough just to read uh, that we shouldn't have a hint of sexual immorality or greed in the Bible. Some folks needed some examples. Reading on, because these are improper for God's holy people. OK, so you are hurting your witness when you're a greedy individual and you want to draw some people close to the Lord, Christian. How are you going to draw some people close to the Lord when they see that you got four and five of this, 10 of this? And then when somebody asks just for one small item, you say no. And you have and you have an attitude when you say it. Maybe some of you all don't call yourselves Christians. OK, believers, you know that you got more than enough. And yet you won't give up that extra desk sitting up in the room. You won't give up that extra bed. Nobody's coming over that house anytime too soon. And by the time they do finally show up, well, if they really want to be in that house, they'll figure out a way to get comfortable. You might need to just get another sofa. Maybe you don't need a bed. You see? I mean, I'm just giving some examples, just throwing some stuff out there because people have a lot of issues and I see it in the spiritual realm. And we could spend a lot of time going over example after example. But you get the point. There are these individuals who have this type of lifestyle that is improper for God's holy people and yet they want to win souls for Christ. But yet they got the sexual immorality and they got the greed. And some of them may not participate, but they support greedy people and they support sexual immorality as as well as the uh, the thoughts and the concepts and the ideas associated with it. So maybe you're not participating in it, but you are supportive of, of this sort of behavior. And the Lord is not pleased. OK, I know I'm not talking to everybody, but I but I am talking to some people. Ephesians 5, 4 says, nor should there be obscenity. Uh Oh, <laughs> we can't run away. We can't run away from truth. You get upset, right? I get upset. Uh Oh, what comes out your mouth? Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, laughing, saying crazy things, dirty stuff, stuff that kids go play. That's not cool. That's not all right. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking. I got a dirty joke for y'all. Y'all ready to hear it? Everybody's all ears. I don't have a dirty joke for you, but just the fact, you see, that some folks are just eager to hear something crazy, something wow, something that's out of pocket. But the Bible, unfortunately, I don't have anything for you because the Bible says, <laughs> nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking. And we see this a lot on YouTube. And you get a lot of page views for acting like a fool. You really do. But here on NM Enterprise 7, we're not doing that. I'm sorry. The page views will continue to be less than 100 under each audio or video because we're not going there. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. So if you don't have anything good to say, as <laughs> so many elders have said, then don't say anything at all. But if you do have something good to say, let it be Thanksgiving. I thank the Lord for what I already have, says the person who's not greedy. If you need some character traits, some examples of what a person who is not greedy looks like, they're thanking God. They're saying hallelujah. They're appreciative of what God has already done. And that even though he may not answer my prayers on this thing and that thing for right now, I know that it is for my good. And that person who's not greedy, they're the type of person that will give a lot. They will give a lot. They will uh, just make sure that people will have uh, their needs met. Now, we're not talking about being a fool and going completely broke and not having a place to stay and then going around begging people for things. I mean, come on now. You got to be smart about some things. But that greedy, but that person who's not greedy is the type of individual who, hey, you want you want this? I mean, I got plenty of clothes. Uh, you want this? I got plenty of these things. I mean, I don't need to hold on to about 50 more other items here. You could take at least 25 of these. You see what I'm saying? 
verse five of Ephesians five for all of this. Listen, for all. For of this, not for all of this, but for of this, you can be sure no immoral, impure or greedy person, such a man is an idolater. That's what the Bible says. So for those that want to, I don't like these names that people, you know, always calling us some names or something. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says that people who are like this are idolaters. They are idol worshipers. So we talk about people who bow down to statues and people who make ritual sacrifices before dark gods and so forth. Well, there are idol worshipers who are greedy, idol worshipers who have a bunch of obscene conversation and so forth. Okay, idolizing themselves, wanting some attention, wanting to shock people and so forth. Right. We got some idol worshiping folks who uh, worship sex, worship people who participate in sex, worship all, all things sexual. OK, these are idol worshipers, the Bible says. And reading on has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So no immoral, impure or greedy person, such a man is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So there is no room for them. OK, so when they say things and, you know, a person is greedy and you can even see on some of these people's bodies. OK, greedy for food. And, you know, that's a topic. Oh, it's real sensitive. People don't want to touch that, especially in the church. And he's standing before audiences or she's standing before audiences. And we can clearly see you greedy for food. Now, you want to talk about the greedy, sexual, Im immoral person. Right. Greedy for sex. You want to talk about that person who's sitting up there cussing and fussing and stuff but look at you you greedy for food you see so isn't it funny how <laughs> as believers right nitpicking on the scriptures oh i don't want to touch that scripture why because i know that every now and again i like to say bad words well god said you're gonna touch that scripture <laughs> right cherry picking nitpicking uh you know and everything else right okay we're going to talk about you. Then what about the other one who's greedy for food? Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about her. What about that other one who loves cussing and fussing and acting like a complete idiot on YouTube? We're going to talk about that one, too. Oh, and who else are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about uh, folks who like to uh, idol worship, right? Wanting all sorts of stuff. They love their things more than they love God. Come on now. Some folks, they sitting there thinking about all of this stuff that they got right now, hoping somebody ain't touching it, driving it, messing with it, taking one out of it. Greed. Jesus, I know this is cutting because sometimes when I read these scriptures, you think it's not cutting for me, please. <laughs> sometimes I, I get all choked up in some of these messages and some people who can listen real closely they're like mm -hmm, she going through something yeah we all going through something it's not just me it's everybody going through something and the lord shows me in the spirit that's why i'm like oh well then i don't mind delivering some of these messages because i know y'all going through too <laughs> right and so we all in this together and we all have to look at where we are going wrong and and why it is so crucial to live this righteous life. Ephesians 5, 6, let no one deceive you with empty words, right? People are going to come up with excuses. I read this out of the um, Living Bible Paraphrase. And for some of you, all, if you really want uh, to uh, get further understanding, uh, the uh the uh, Living Bible Paraphrase is really easy to understand, especially for you younger people. Um, people like to make excuses for why they do what they do. And so when we point these things out, and they'll even do it through the comments, uh, you know, well, the reason why I'm greedy about some stuff is because when I was a kid, I never had too much. So that's why I, I love my shoes. I love my clothes. I love having about four or five of this item and that one. When I go to the grocery store, I like to stockpile, you know, <laughs> but that look, you can make all the excuses you want. Right. Especially those seniors that like to stockpile on a lot of stuff. You can make all the excuses that you want. OK, but the Bible says we're not to be deceived with those empty words. And that's just what they are. OK, because people don't want to face the fact that they're exposed. 
Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Okay? This is what happens. So when you look at that greedy person that got a lot of stuff and they're going through much disobedience, God most likely is convicting them to start getting rid of some things, you know, sharing some things, doing any number of stuff to help others. And they're not doing it. So they're in disobedience. And so God's wrath is upon that greedy person. When that person is having a lot of issues, that sexually immoral immoral person, STDs, stuff around their mouth, stuff going on in their private areas, stuff, uh, you know, um, in their body, just aching. Maybe they don't see it. Maybe you don't see it, but there's stuff going on in their body. Um, they're feeling depressed. They're always in some kind of argument with some woman or with some man, or they're always, you know, having some type of drama with their partner because they know that they're emotionally and or possibly physically cheating. You know that God's wrath is upon that individual. He is allowing Satan to have his way as a result of their disobedience. Okay. OK, so when you sit back and you wonder why some people going through as much as they're going through, it is because of these things. I mean, of course, there's other scripture that will get into other subject matter. But for today, this is why these people go through as much as they go through. And we pray for them. But at the same time, though, when God's wrath is upon them, there's really nothing that that believer can do. And they get mad at us. Your prayers don't work. What's wrong with you? I mean, I thought you was close to the Lord. I am close to the Lord, but my prayer is not working because God's wrath is <laughs> is on, on you. That's why. So don't sit up there and start this mess about you. You know, you claim to be this and that and the other. I don't claim to be any of that. That's what God put upon me. I'm just the post man, post woman delivering a message. You see, disobedience is going to bring about God's wrath until that person decides to be obedient and stop with the sexual immorality, stop being greedy, stop cussing and fussing and acting like a complete fool, having all sorts of conversation that is wrong with people until they make up in their minds to stop doing all of that. They are being disobedient. Therefore, what does the Bible say? Do not be partners with them. So for those of you all considering on marrying someone who is cussing and fussing and acting like this, okay, greedy, sexually immoral, right? Lusting after you plus lusting after everybody else too. Because if you look out the corner of your eye, you can see a man who's always looking at everything on a woman's body or on another man's body because you got some who's down low, okay? When you see this sort of thing and women too acting like this, okay, you want to be partners with that person? How about, okay, they cuss about everybody else, right? And you be sitting there laughing. Oh, <laughs> that's so funny. She's so crazy, <laughs> right? But then sooner or later, that person that likes to run their mouth and talk crazy, they, they are going to eventually be out of pocket with you. It's just a matter of time. What I mean by that is eventually being disrespectful toward you. So, yes, they might be entertaining among the circle and everybody might like how they roll and they may get a lot of likes on their YouTube videos and so forth. But sooner or later, that same one that's entertaining you and everybody else is going to be disrespectful and act in ways that you may end up having to check them in front of everybody. OK, meaning that you might have to tell them. That you are not going to put up with their type of behavior, that you're not going to deal with all of this cursing and acting like, you know, a, a very nasty, evil type of person. You're not going to keep dealing with that. You're not going to keep hearing that out of their mouths. And what are they going to do? They're going to turn on you like a snake. Oh, who do you think you are telling me this and telling me that? You know what? <laughs> I would go over there and smack you just for that. Oh, see. But it was all entertaining before, right? And we was laughing and it was all good. And then sometimes people like that will provoke you. Now you feel like you got to cuss them out or curse them. <laughs> okay. And when you do that sort of thing, now you're in disobedience. Okay. And now God's wrath going to come upon you because God said, you know better. Now she might not know better. He might not know better, but you know better. This is why the Christian sometimes just walks away. It doesn't mean that we're weak. It doesn't mean that, oh, she's just, uh, she's just pathetic. She can't even stand up for herself. No, it's just that we know that we don't want to end up experiencing God's wrath. Okay. 
Now, the Bible reminds us, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Okay? And find out what pleases the Lord. So I'm going to end this message with that. Okay? That's what you're supposed to do. Saint as well as sinner. Person who's greedy as well as person who's not greedy. Person who's participating in foolish talk as well as the person who's not participating in foolish talk. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. So take a moment today, sit back, relax, and ask the Lord, what is it that I do that pleases you? Or what is it that I need to do that pleases you? Real simple. Well, thank you as always for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. Subscribe today. Also, tune in to part two of this message. We're going to uh, continue on with uh, this topic and we're going to get into wives and husbands. So if you are married, you don't want to miss it. Check the description box for anything that might be of interest. And also, we do accept donations. So please do give. Well, that is it. Praise God. Blessings to you.